When you think of the word justice, what comes to mind? Maybe you picture a courtroom with a judge and getting retribution for a wrong that's been done. Or maybe what comes to mind is one of the many movies where an ex-military guy goes after all the bad guys, inflicting the kind of punishment we would choose by someone if we could bypass the court system. We have this sense that the world is unfair, and if we could just take justice into our own hands, things would be so much better. The people of Jesus' day had a similar understanding of justice. When the Jewish people anticipated the Messiah, they expected it to look like freedom from Rome's oppression. A Messiah overthrowing Rome with a mighty wrath that would instantly elevate the Jewish people to power. But eliminating Rome would have only been a temporary justice. Instead of offering mercy to Israel alone, he offered mercy to all people through Jesus. Jesus came to take on the punishment that is rightly ours so we wouldn't have to. He created a pathway to God that didn't require sacrifice and rituals, but faith and relationship. Although prophecy pointed this kind of Messiah, the way Jesus sought to bring justice was extremely difficult to grasp for those following him, and it made no sense from an earthly perspective. But from an eternal perspective, the justice Jesus offered was and is the greatest gift ever given to humanity. Biblical justice is about restoring things to right, the way God designed it to be. Now, maybe you've heard that a hundred times, but I want us to reflect on that just for a moment. God loves you so much that he chose to take on flesh and experience pain, hunger, heartache, loss, betrayal, and even death, all to save you and me and bring you to himself. Even though we repeatedly fail to walk rightly, even though we deserve punishment and separation from God, he instead lavishes mercy and grace and love on us through Jesus' death and resurrection. For all who trust in Jesus, God's justice truly is the best news and our greatest hope. So what does it look like for us to practice justice as we follow Jesus? Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. What that means is that every human being we encounter is an image bearer of God. But if you're like me, you may not always act like this is true. Jesus spent his earthly ministry elevating image bearers that had often been dismissed and diminished by society. People considered less than women, children, the poor, the sick, tax collectors, the outcasts, the adulterers. As we read through the Gospels, we see that these are the people Jesus chooses to spend time with, to stop and to see, to heal, the ones he calls to follow him. The stories of healing recorded in the Gospels are often ones of interruption. Jesus is on his way to heal a 12-year-old girl when he heals the woman who's been bleeding for 12 years. He's on his way to Jerusalem when he heals the 10 lepers. He's on his way to Jericho when he heals a blind man sitting beside the roadside. We watch him setting things to right, restoring justice again and again, taking time for people who were usually passed by and avoided, discarded. Perhaps when you think of justice, what comes to mind is doing something big and impactful and with an underserved population, and that may be what God is calling you to. But I think for most of us, practicing justice looks like starting small, being open to interruption and noticing. Justice begins by seeing the person in front of me as an image bearer of God. In a world that moves quickly and is often lived virtually, the very act of being seen can mean more than we think. Jesus often went to lonely places to pray and to be with his Father because he was seeking to do the will of the Father. If we want to do the will of the Father and follow Jesus, prayer is where we must begin too. We pray because we recognize that I will need to rely on the Holy Spirit to give me the love, patience, goodness, and kindness to be gentle and generous with the person in front of me. So our action step for today is this. Spend 10 minutes with God in prayer. Begin by thanking him for his grace and mercy offered to us through the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Sit with God the Father in gratitude, remembering that it is only through Jesus that justice is good news for sinners like us. Then take a moment to ask God, 
where is it that I'm holding my version of justice over someone in my life? Am I holding on to bitterness against a family member for past hurts? Do I view a certain person or a group as being beyond your redemption and unworthy of your mercy because of a justice issue? Ask the Lord to give you his compassion and understanding. Ask for new eyes to see the people in your life as he sees them. For some of you, there may be an injustice in your past that you are carrying around as a wound, and that's what's coming to mind for you right now. If that is you, I want you to know that healing is possible, and healing is what our Heavenly Father desires for you. God wants to knit together your wounded heart, and we would like to be a place where you can start that journey. You can reach out to our care department and get connected to people who can help you move forward with healing from the injustice you've suffered. Lastly, I would invite you to ask the Lord to bring an interruption to you in the next 24 hours. Pray that you would have eyes to see those around you as image bearers of God and be able to show them a small kindness in a way that you may have missed without being watchful. We'd love to have you share a comment about what the Lord did through that prayer.